from cavalry units that almost took over the world to fierce Scandinavians who went berserk, here, here are, are the greatest, greatest medieval warriors. warriors. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm your host, American Eye, bringing to you another epic video. Number 13, Frankish Throwing Axemen. This elite group of warriors had a secret weapon that they could deploy during the heat of battle. Dating back to 500 AD, the Franks, or a group of people inhabiting France at that time, would strike fear to their enemies by throwing massive volleys of specially designed axes at them. Each warrior would be equipped with a sword, a shield, and an axe. The axe would be designed to be short and sharp in order to inflict as much damage as possible. They would normally be instructed to throw the axe during the primary charge with the hopes of shattering their enemy's shields. The axes had an effective range of about 40 meters and even if they didn't get hit by the sharp part, the heavy iron head could still be very dangerous. These were known to be used during the time of Charlemagne and also some Germanic tribes during that time. Number 12. The Winged Hussars you probably never took too much time to think about it, but one of the reasons why Europe was able to stay Christian was because of the Winged Hussars. These were a heavy Polish cavalry unit. It's not exactly sure why they had wings, but some believe it was to reduce noise on the battlefield in order to keep their horses from becoming startled. During the Battle of Vienna in 1683, the Ottoman Empire sent tens of thousands of men to lay siege upon the Austrian capital. It was starting to look really bad until the Winged Hussars showed up. Kingdoms all over Europe sent help to the front lines, and the Polish cavalry unit, known as the Winged Hussar, played a big role in finishing them off. The defeat would prove to keep the Ottomans from advancing too far west, and the empire would begin to decline. Number 11. Eagle Warriors Eagle Warriors were special forces for the Aztecs, and were often considered to have a noble background. They were credited for taking a large number of prisoners during battle. Those prisoners wouldn't be detained for too long, because most of them would end up sacrificed to their gods. Training would begin as early as possible, and only the toughest and the bravest recruits would get the chance to become an eagle warrior. They were notable for their headdress, which included a helmet that was shaped like the head of an eagle with its mouth open. They proved to be successful against the Spanish, and were able to drive them out of the capital city of Tenochtitlan. Number 10. The Boyars. This elite group of Eastern European warriors were a member of the highest rank, who were only behind ruling princes. Their rank and wealth helped provide them with some of the finest horses, armor, and weapons. They were pretty much the knights of Eastern Europe and ruled over a feudal system with ownership of land. They held much power in countries such as Bulgaria, Serbia, Moldova, Romania, and so on. When battle was necessary, this powerful group did not hesitate to unite with other boyars and attack the enemy. One of the most noble depictions of the boyars comes from the Madara Rider, which is on a cliff in northeastern Bulgaria. It dates back to the 7th century AD and is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 9. Teutonic Knights the Teutonic Knights were not only known for being a fighting force to reckon with, but also capable of some great accomplishments in engineering, as we're about to see. Located in Poland, the Malbork Castle, also known as the Teutonic Order in the city of Malbork, is actually the largest castle in the world measured by land area. This makes it a formidable choice for kings and queens to feel safe. It was constructed by the Teutonic Knights, who had many similarities with the Knights Templar. One of the main differences, though, was that the Teutonic Knights wanted to establish hospitals in the Holy Land, as opposed to the Templars, who wanted to establish banks. They would go on to be defeated by the Mongols in 1241, but then they would still go on to reach their peak in 1407, including territory in Germany, the Baltic areas, and northern Poland. Number 8. Janissaries Janissaries were an elite infantry unit that was formed by the Ottoman Turks and were likely established sometime between 1362 to 1389. They were originally an elite crew of kidnapped Christians who were converted to Islam as the empire expanded. Instead of being slaves though, Janissaries were given money which helped ensure their loyalty to some degree. During medieval times, Janissaries were expert archers and they managed to adopt firearms early on in the 1400s. Their melee weapon of choice was the Yadagan sword, but were also known for a variety of equipment that could certainly explode. In 1433, they tackled the serious challenge of capturing Constantinople. Number 7. The Samurai The Samurai are some of the most traditional warriors on this list, and they followed a strict code known as Bushido, which helped keep them very disciplined. They would much rather die in battle than be captured by the enemy. The spirit of the Samurai is still alive when you take a look at how popular the weapons are to collectors in modern times. Blacksmiths heat and fold iron hundreds of times in order to ensure that there's no weak points in the Samurai Sword. Considered to be the spirit of the samurai, the sword can consist of thousands of layers of steel, and the forging site was considered to be sacred. In the end, the sword is as beautiful as it is dangerous. Skilled samurai warriors would be able to make three cuts in the same time it would take one swing from a European broadsword. Number 6. Mangudai 
This Mongol tribe almost did the impossible by nearly conquering the world, but their achievements are still impressive nonetheless. Their descendants are now scattered in several different regions across the former Mongol Empire. They were a warlike people to begin with and allied themselves with Genghis Khan around the mid-12th century AD. They're often described as fearless light cavalry units who have been extremely skilled with a bow and arrow while riding a horse. There isn't a ton of info on this unit, but you better believe that anyone who came across a horde of these warriors felt just a tad bit anxious. Number 5. British Longbowmen Archers don't typically get a whole lot of attention for being fierce warriors in battle, however their importance and their efficiency on the front lines can't be overlooked. The British Longbowmen were like the snipers of their day and were equipped with a 6 foot bow, taller than the average person in those times. Its range and penetration capabilities were unmatched, especially in comparison with a crossbow. Longbows were even used until the Battle of Flodin in 1513, well after the invention of the firearm. Fun fact, even Benjamin Franklin suggested that they should bring back the longbow to be used against the British. Oh, the irony. It would still be able to fire just as accurately and could have done a bit of damage to waves of British soldiers during the Revolutionary War. Let us know what you think about that in the comments section. Number 4. Templars the Knights Templar were formed in France and was a secret society of elite knights and monks during the Crusades. They pledged to commit their lives to a secret code after conquering the Holy Land of modern day Israel. The religious warriors formed in 1114 and were a fighting force to reckon with. The Templars made it easier for pilgrims to travel to the Holy Land from Western Europe by providing protection and creating banks. After a while, even the King of France, King Philip, found himself in debt to the powerful group. Among some of the first bankers in Europe, their wealth expanded quickly, which gave them a vast amount of resources to spend on crusades, as well as some of the best weaponry in Europe. The devout Christians would build castles that still stand to this day, and would even fight for control of the Holy Land. The Templars are possibly still out there, conducting their operations and holy wars in a more secretive fashion. Number 3. Jaguar Warriors Another fierce warrior from the Americas, the Jaguar Warriors were an elite military unit that praised the Jaguar for its stealth abilities and its sheer strength. An Atol Atol or Spear Thrower was used by Aztec warriors and could add leverage and increase velocity to the projectile being thrown. It was pretty simple and consisted of a cup or a spur at the end where the spear was loaded. The Spear Thrower is operated with just one hand and the Atol Atol acts as a lever. The Jaguar Warriors also fought with a wooden club that was studded with volcanic glass known as Obsidian. Don't underestimate the effectiveness of this stone weapon. The natural glass is known for being able to get extremely sharp, even sharper than steel, to the point where you can actually shave with it. Some even refer to it as the obsidian chainsaw, so watch out. Number 2. Mamelukes The Mamelukes were a cavalry unit that once belonged to the Saracens during the Crusades. They were often people who were captured and forced into a life of war. Many of the soldiers came from countries like Egypt, Turkey, and some areas in the Balkans as well. Despite their separation from their families, the Mamluks considered to be extremely loyal and dependable in battle. Talk about some Stockholm Syndrome, right? They were known to be fierce fighters, often sporting some heavy armor like we see here. Some probably felt a little bit motivated by the spoils of war and gained a boost in social status to join. Even the horses were decked out in scale armor, which would help deflect arrows fired at them. The Mamluks were basically the tanks of their day. They would go on to help drive out the Christians during numerous crusades. And number 1. The Berserkers The Vikings were a fairly well-organized group of Scandinavian seafarers who raided homelands in Northern Europe. They obtained an advanced knowledge in warfare, metallurgy, and shipmaking. Utilizing their skills in shipmaking, they would often pillage many parts of Europe due to a lack of natural resources in their homeland. Viking longboats are quite unique and are built to be very sturdy while navigating through the treacherous fjords, seas, and even oceans. Some Vikings were referred to as berserkers, which originally meant that they were crazy enough to fight without any armor on. Trying to fight bare chests at that time was pretty courageous. Now, in modern times, berserk means a crazy person. In case you were wondering, the Vikings didn't actually wear horn helmets, but their ferocity and mobility made them some of the most savage warriors of all time. Whoa, now that was a cool video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.